Do you love double XL luxurious and super comfortable people hauling trucks? If so, I've got three of the biggest and best right behind me. Brand new Lexus LX, the Range Rover with the diesel, and of course, the brand spanking new Navigator. And coming up right now in the fast lane truck, we're gonna find out which of these badass trucks is best. that that Lexus at $86,300 is the cheapest, the least expensive of the three. And that's a good thing because basically, sort of kind of, that is a Toyota Land Cruiser with a Lexus badge on it. In my book, that's a very good thing because the Land Cruiser, that is one of the most reliable, one of the oldest, if not the oldest, overlanding vehicle ever made. It's funny, all three of these trucks have three completely different power plants. In the case of the Lexus, you're getting the biggest, a V8 that puts out 383 horsepower and 403 pound-foot of torque, made it to an eight-speed transmission. Now, if that sounds familiar, it's because the same engine is in the Tundra as well as the Land Cruiser. And these are very reliable, very gutsy engines that have one issue, they're very thirsty. This truck, 15 mpg combined because under the skin this is basically a land cruiser it's got all of the land cruiser goodies in fact it's got one more that the land cruiser doesn't have you can raise and lower the height of this truck depending on your needs it also has four high four low different modes for off-roading including crawl control and turn assist and check this out, a lockable center differential. Now all this is completely irrelevant because let's face it, anybody who buys this truck, at least the first customer, will never touch any of these buttons. This thing's gonna see a lot more service on Hollywood Boulevard than it will ever see on the Rubicon Trail. And I'm gonna do a little bit of light off-roading because let's face it, the first owner of these expensive vehicles will most likely not take them off-road. I have raised the suspension to its highest setting because, well, the approach, departure, and breakover angle on this monster is pretty atrocious unless you take it to its highest possible off-road setting. Now, that's the good part of it. The downside to that, of course, is that when you get the suspension on its tippy toes, it doesn't make for a lot of suspension travel, so the ride gets a little bit rough. But it allows me to do things like clear rocks, which is a good thing because I don't want to damage this vehicle. Now I'm kind of on a fire road, which is I think about as steep and deep as anybody would take one of these vehicles. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's big. You're basically driving a truck with no bed down pretty easy off-road area. I'm a huge fan of Lexus interiors, and this is one of the nicest of the three, but I'm not a huge fan of this infotainment system that is basically a Toyota-sourced infotainment system. The screen is nice and large. Um, there is kind of this mouse-like selector that lets you pick the different options, but overall, the system is just a little bit cumbersome and a little bit, let's call it, late 1990s. Now you can get your LX with or without a third row, and this one doesn't have the third row, which makes it a little cheaper. Now you may be thinking to yourself, Roman, for a truck without a third row, you're pretty cramped back here. Aha, let me show you this truck's party trick. Electric sliding rear seats, giving me, oh yeah, ample room to spread out and enjoy the stadium seating over the front seats. So I gotta ask you guys, what do you think of this new spindle grill? I mean, it is bold, it is big, there is no mistake in this when it's going down the highway. In fact, this whole truck is a big square box with a bow tie. Let me know in the comments below if you think that anybody will actually ever take this Lexus off-road. Forget about the first owner, the second owner, maybe the third owner, but I'd like to get your ideas 
do people actually take these vehicles off-road? My contention is that they probably don't. I do like this feature right there. It shows you which way the wheels are pointing. Uh, that's a really nice feature if you're off-roading. I also like, let me turn the camera a little bit. Um, the camera is on the car, you get a bird's eye view, and of course you can see straight ahead of you. So if you are about to run over your videographer, you know when to stop before you have a workman's comp issue. <laughs> My son, Tommy. I have to say, I do really love this little tailgate feature. It's one of my favorite things about these big truck-based SUVs. You can sit and tailgate. At 108,000, this is the most expensive of these trucks. And is it really a truck? Well, unlike the Navigator and the Lexus, this is a unibody vehicle. Those other two are body on frame. And this vehicle is made of aluminum. And let's face it, Range Rover, Land Rover, has been using aluminum long before Ford thought of putting it in their trucks. Think about it, so far we've had not one, not two, but three different powertrains. And in the Range Rover, we have a diesel, a three liter diesel that puts out 254 horsepower and 443 pound foot of torque. It also gets the best fuel economy by far. We're looking at 24 MPG combined and that is very impressive for a big vehicle like this. We've looked at three vehicles in three different ways of selecting gears. This has a rotary knob, the Lincoln has a push button, and the Lexus had a traditional gear selector. Out of all those three, I like the Lexus the best, but this rotary knob is starting to grow on me. This also has adjustable suspension. Once again, I'm betting, just like on the old P38 Range Rover, at some point, this is gonna fail. But, when you have it, it's nice to use. And thank God they kept the volume knob. At least that is still easy to operate. Out of these three trucks, the one that's most likely to go off-road is this one, because Range Rover obviously has a heritage and a reputation for being a very off-road worthy vehicle. So let's put it in the highest mode. Off-road height selected. Once again, I'm not doing any rock crawling or sand, dune bashing. I'm just going down a fire road. And let's see how this uh, Range Rover compares to the other trucks. Uh, immediately, I like it. And I like it because it's the smallest, at least in terms of its perceived off-roading width. The other two trucks, I feel like I'm driving a semi down a dirt road here. I feel like I'm driving a vehicle that I can actually negotiate some of these tighter fire roads. Same issue as with Lexus. We're on our tippy toes here with the suspension at its highest ride height. I guess if you can afford a lake, stream, or go up a mountain, it has a lot of boulders. It's nice to have the ability to increase that approach departure and breakover angle. In this 2018 model, Range Rover has gone to this buttonless virtual infotainment system. You know, I'm not a huge fan of these systems. I really worry about how long before one of these two screens fails, at which point you're going to have a hard time controlling some of the essential features of your vehicle. You can get a Range Rover with a third row, but let's face it, not many do. To me, this represents the sort of car buyer who's most likely to have a butler and most likely to spend the most amount of time back here. And it's a nice place to spend time. It's very refined, it's very elegant, and it's very comfortable. Of course, one of the things that distinguishes Range Rover is that they've gone to a fully automatic system in that you can select auto and the vehicle will actually know what the best terrain management algorithm is. It will lock and unlock the center differential as needed. It's a great system for, let's say, 90% of the time. If you're doing serious off-roading, I still prefer manual locking, rear and front diffs, kind of the stuff that you get in a Wrangler or a G-Wagon. Of course, the one thing that all these trucks don't have is good off-road tires, but you probably knew that already. 
The Range Rover, at least to me, has always represented the continental definition of style, which is ironic because the UK is not even on the continent. But it is very European. It's sexy, it's suave. It is by far the James Bond of this group. <laughs> now that is the definition of clamshell. And of course, it's fully electric. Yeah, I feel like I'm ready to watch some rugby. Or is it cricket? Tommy, you know where that's made? Where is it at? Made in America, in Kentucky. And with the new Navigator, Lincoln is redefining American luxury. In fact, at $96,000, it's a little bit less expensive than the Range Rover and a little bit more expensive than the Lexus. It's the Goldilocks of the group. Under the hood is a 3.5 liter twin turbo that is, well, basically out of the rafter. It produces 450 horsepower and 510 pound-foot of torque. It is also paired to a 10-speed automatic and it gets 18 mpg combined once again right in the middle of the three the goldilocks truck you know when sync first came out i really hated it uh, and since then ford has done a really good job in updating it it's still a little bit clunky but now it's relatively straightforward and when it works it's actually pretty easy to navigate yeah it's okay the one thing I don't like though is this push button transmission. For some reason, Lincoln and Acura believe that push button is a way to change gears. I really don't like it. What I do like is the fact that this is the only truck with a built-in brake controller and even trailer backup if you're a newbie or a little bit afraid of backing up big trailers because this truck will tow the most, almost 8,500 pounds, which is substantially more than both the Lexus and the Range Rover. When you're talking about going off-road, there really are no buttons to press, no locking differentials to choose. It's all automatic. You pick your drive mode, and the truck does everything else for you. So, like an F-150, it defaults to being in rear-wheel drive, but you can set it into all-wheel drive, actually four-wheel drive. It is a truck after all. And four-wheel drive low. I'm old school, so I really like the fact that it doesn't have any height adjustable suspension. It's just like a pickup truck. You don't really need it. And on these fire roads that are a little bit rutted out, it feels like an old friend. And that's because, of course, for the longest time we had a Ford F-150 Raptor. And in a lot of ways, getting behind the wheel of this reminds me of driving an F-150 because, well, basically it's got the same DNA of an F-150. This is by far the biggest truck. This is by far the most comfortable truck. This is by far the truck that has the most interior volume, and that is very American. In fact, sitting back here, not only do I have plenty of headspace, headroom, knee room, but I am extremely comfortable. I can see this becoming the new American limousine. It's big, it's heavy, it's fast, and off-road, it's capable, you know? Sometimes there's no replacement, not just for displacement, but for a good approach departure and breakover angles, and pickup trucks have those. Yes, this isn't quite the pickup, it does have some fancy front end fascia and the rear end fascia of course is also more delicate than that in a pickup truck but nevertheless that pickup truck DNA really comes through when you're driving it off road and I like that a lot. Of course we're rolling on 22s. This is the double XL of the trucks of the group and it is redefining American style and American luxury and I gotta give it up to Lincoln Ford in this case for building a vehicle that is way outside of the box. Do you like the looks of it? I do. Some of you may not, but it is certainly different and a little bit old school Lincoln and a lot new school. All right, I do miss the little flip down 
tailgate but this is the kind of truck where you're gonna go watch your kids play baseball or even soccer that's right it's America soccer not football If it were my money, which of these behemoths would I choose? If I wanted the most reliable, I would go for the Lexus. If I wanted the most stylish, the James Bond of the bunch, I'd certainly go for the Range Rover. But if I wanted the biggest badass truck here, yeah, I'd go for the Navigator. As always, this is Roman saying thanks for watching and check out tfltruck.com for more news views and big ass truck reviews. See you guys next time, ciao.